Well, 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 here we are. It is uh, November 13th. Um, I'm coming to you live 9 a.m. San Francisco, California. And we are super excited today because we have a really special meetup for you. I have Undu Tua Kat Sank, Sank people, five people from uh, Containus uh, going to speak to you today. So let's go through our basic stuff um, and then I'll lead you into what we're going to talk about today. So first, let me say um, welcome, welcome and, and thank you. Um, I am Patricia Dugan. I am the director of community for Containus. And my role and responsibility is to help take care of our, well, let me say this. I help make marketing initiatives um, to best tend to our users and developer pool so that you have the most enjoyable time when using our product, Traffic, Mesh, and Yegi, our products. Um, today, what you are doing is you, you have attended a Traffic Online Meetup which showcases way traffic is being used to solve interesting technical challenges. And as I was thinking last night, I was really you know, realizing like traffic is amazing. And we are here today to show you how to like bring your use of traffic up to the next level. Like, like don't just use traffic, like let it be, you know, let it be everything it is to make your life easier when you're, you're doing infrastructure and architecture, um, infrastructure management. Uh, a couple of things. This is pretty cool. So today we are introducing you to Pascal. He is our new developer advocate. Uh, he is also on team. We love our users. Um, and here, let me share with you his Twitter handle so you can ping him if you're on Twitter. Um, Pascal is going to help make sure that your life is awesome and share the news of traffic and our products with the world. Um, and welcome uh, Pascal to the team. Next, we have um, the knowledge that we will be at KubeCon in San Diego next week. So if you're going to be there, please stop by our booth, S24. Um, we have a couple of things going on. One is we have a super cool shirt we wanna give you. Um, we have this cool artist who makes like this gopher art that is so radical. Um, and, and so we're gonna have these cool uh, limited edition shirts. And we have a contest going on. If you use uh, traffic, please come to our booth and share your testimonial on video. And if it is awesome, you are going to win an embroidered, very, very cool um, hoodie to take home and wear proudly. Um, again, booth S24. And then I have a little secret, which I can't tell you, but it's going to be shared next week. Um, there is something I've been working on. I'm actually very proud of it because it's my little work baby. And um, that's gonna, it's a secret right now, but it's all for you. I have been working on it all for you and we have been working on it all for you and it's gonna come out next Monday. So please keep your eyes on the newsletter, on our social media and, um, and then you'll see what the surprise is next week. Now, um, December 12th, we have another online meetup. It will be Andy Clemenko of Docker and you might know him on Twitter. So uh, look him up and I'll share his Twitter handle also. And then, um, and then now on to the real joy of the day, which is our online meetup today. And we're going to talk about traffic 2.0. Yay, yay, yay. The thing you're all using, but there is so much that came with traffic 2.0. We're so stoked on it. And we want to make sure you know how to best use it so you can drive that, drive a motorcycle or the bike like I do or the Lamborghini um, to the best of your capacity. So what we have today is we have our maintainer team. We have um, Ludovic, JB, Mathieu, and Julien. Um, and actually in the house also, but I don't know if he'll be talking, is Gerald, who is our leader of the pack. And uh, they are going to give you some demos. We're going to talk about all the new features we have and really help you maximize your experience with V2 because we know it's been a lot. Um, and so with that, I think that's all I have. I wanna thank you again for coming. We have a lot of questions you sent us that we're going to answer, but I wanna welcome you to please enter your questions in the chat box. We'll collect them and uh, we're going to answer them and also answer them in a gist. And this video will go to our YouTube channel so you can watch it um, and leave comments and what else? Much love 
Thank you for supporting us. Thank you for using our software. And we are super grateful. And I am super grateful that you show up today. So with that, I'm going to pass this over to the V2 maintainer team. And thank you, everyone. Good luck, guys. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Mathieu. I'm going to show you a few slides. Um, I hope you are all seeing my screen correctly. So as uh, Patricia introduced us, uh, Ludovic, Julien. Um, so as you may know, for this, for preparing this meetup, we asked the community to send us uh, some questions that they would like answered. And the community did deliver. We've got a few very interesting questions and yeah, a few, a few nice questions. And now is the time to answer them for your pleasure. The first one was, uh, what was the motivation for doing V2? And there, there's like two main answers to that. One of them is that we wanted to redo a lot of the core of uh, traffic, a lot of the, like, the, main, the main parts so that it would be easier in the future to maintain it and to add new big features that didn't fit very well with how traffic was made uh, from the start. And the second uh, big motivation was that we wanted to add new concepts that uh, fit better how a reverse proxy works. And that went with uh, redoing how the configuration is in V2. And I'm now going to detail a bit more uh, what I've just talked about. So what were those core changes to traffic and the new features that uh, derived from there? Um, so I guess you know a lot of that because we announced it with the V2, but we can reiterate that it's TCP routing, uh, the new middleware system, a new uh, way to interact, to integrate with the uh, Kubernetes, which is called custom uh, resource definition. And we, so we just added our own, own definition, which is called ingress route. Uh, the syntax, the the rules, uh, the routing rules uh, have a new syntax now, which is more uh, powerful. Um, we support cross -pro provider, which means that you can refer to a provider from another provider. So let's say from Kubernetes, you can refer to something that is defined in a Docker provider and vice versa. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the TLS configuration and hence the termination of TLS has been redone and it can now be done per router instead of globally, which is uh, pretty powerful as well. And all the load balancing has been redone as well, which means we only support for now a WRR, uh, which is um, load balancing and some mirroring, but uh, more will come later. And finally, the, the web UI, the API and the dashboard, all of them, they have been redone pretty much from scratch. Uh, so that, yeah, they would fit, they would fit better with the, the rest of uh, the V2 as well. Uh, now onto this new configuration and the new concepts uh, which are introduced. Uh, mainly you can find uh, these, enti these entities now in the configuration. Some of them are new, some of them not, but that's what you're, you'll be working with when you're writing a V2 configuration. And those are routers, services, which are, you know, uh, used by routers, middlewares is the same, and you can define, for example, one middleware and use it in several routers. Uh, you, you still have the entry points. Uh, the TLS section is now uh, a part as well, and what we call the certificate providers, which is mainly uh, ACMail and SunCrypt, but it can be a bit uh, larger than that. Also, some like fundamental breaking changes to the configuration is that the static configuration and the dynamic configuration, they are not always separate. You cannot have them in the same file, which was kind of an, an abuse of the system before. And now we kind of decided that it's, it was not worth maintaining that sort of hack. So they are not separated always. Um, as well, the HTTP and TCP support are now completely separate uh, sections at the root of the configuration. So all your HTTP stuff is in one section and TCP in another one. And finally, uh, you cannot anymore mix uh, different inputs. You cannot have uh, traffic configured both a little bit from the CLI and from the environment variables on the file. You have to choose which, uh, which input you want. 
Um, so you may be interested to know that behind the scenes, what uh, made that co new configuration change possible is that we redid a lot of the parser system for this configuration that is used for all of that. And it's now kind of a generic one, which we can use for all the different inputs, which is CLI, file, environment uh, variables and la labels. Um, and the other advantage is that it makes this thing easier to maintain and even extend if we, <coughs> I'm sorry, if we ever want or need to. And also that allows us to, you know, generate the documentation for all the CLI flags uh, automatically, which is a big win because it was a pain to maintain otherwise. If you want to know more about all these V2 features, which you know have been, I've been quick about it right now because we've talked about it in the past so so much. So you can come back to those uh, blog posts, which uh, you know go at great length of describing all the V2 V2 stuff. Now the second question, interesting question that we got was what changed between uh, version one and version two. And we're going to answer that mainly uh, by doing a big demo, uh, which will start uh, with uh, Julian and then Ludovic will go on. So I'm now going to hand over the sharing to Julian. Hi, so yes, I I'm Julian and I, I will try to show my screen and okay. Okay, and now just put in the slide again. Okay. Okay, uh, so uh, as we say, the, the question was uh, what, um, how to migrate something to, from V1 to V2. And so uh, as a reminder, I will just talk about uh, the V1 architecture and then uh, after the V2 architecture, the new architecture. So uh, in the V1, uh, we have some entry points uh, who, which listen uh, uh, from a port uh, and then on the, uh, the certificates, the TLS and uh, some kind of um, middleware like basic odds or whitelist or something like this. So this was the, the first thing the, 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 where the incoming HTTP request just uh, came. Uh, and then we had uh, front ends uh, and front ends uh, were uh, about uh, looking the request to, to know what to do with this request. Uh, they handle some uh, some kind of uh, middleware too, like uh, again, basic odds or, or uh, uh, changing the headers and everything. And then uh, they uh, forward the traffic to backends and backends was uh, the load balancing system and uh, was where you, you add you, all your servers and everything. In the V2, it's not completely different, but it's different. Uh, we have still uh, the entry points, uh, but entry points are only ports because entry points are part of the static conf and you cannot change it during uh, the lifetime of your uh, your process, your, your 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 traffic process, and so you have now routers that um, looks like a, a little bit like front ends, where you will uh, connect the, your request to your services. Uh, you will you will have rules uh, to just know which request to take for each router, and then you will apply some middleware. Uh, like basic code and whitelist and headers and everything to just tweak the request or the response. And then you forward to the service and the service is like the backend, just load balancing and just uh, get all your servers. And as you can see, middleware are um, really split from the router. Now you can define middlewares and just router will reference uh, those middleware. Let's uh, try to see this. Uh, by migrating a V1 application. So this is a V1 application, okay. Uh, as you can see, uh, I have traffic, uh, it's important. And this is a 1.7. Uh, I have some common line arguments, okay. And then I have two application, uh, one uh, with just uh, the uh, application two is with a simple rule uh, like traffic.com.localhost with pass prefix uh, slash bar. Uh, just a basic code configure on it and that's all. And uh, the other application is a more complicated uh, routing uh, rule uh, because we have two rule. Uh, we want to say that we want to uh, go on this application if we have traffic.com localhost slash foo or uh, containers.com localhost slash bar. 
and we still have another uh, basic code configure here. Um, so uh, let's try to migrate this to V2. So the first thing I will have to do is to change uh, the Docker image, okay? Uh, and I will uh, start to migrate uh, all the command line arguments. Uh, so for this one, uh, this is the entry point. Uh, we change a little bit the syntax uh, to define entry points. And now um, you don't have some parsing system with complex uh, thing like name and everything. You just say entry point. You want the entry point to be called web and you can just configure the address of this one to be like this, okay? As you can see here, I have some raw direct. And a raw direct now is a middleware and so it's part of the dynamic conf. You will be able to, to configure your raw direct, to change your raw direct uh, directly without restarting traffic. And so uh, to do this, we need to add labels on our container to configure uh, the raw direct. So uh, I will put some labels on this one. Okay, I will just uh, enable uh, traffic for this uh, container, for this service. Okay. And I will start to configure an HTTP. We talk about this, not a TCP, but an, an HTTP. Julian? Yeah? I'm inter this is the, the voice of your colleague. I'm interrupting because I wonder, is it possible to um, make the font larger and maybe the light screen also? I want to make sure the recording gets this nice so people can see it better. Uh, I will try to do this. So uh, Sorry to interrupt. Uh, up. Is this better? That is so much better. Um, okay. Not sure if you you want to do the light screen, but your call. But this is great. Thank you. Okay. So uh, as I said, we we will start to configure a router. So we say that this is an HTTP routers. Okay. And this router will catch all the traffic on the web entry point. So we call we will call it something like HTTP catch all. This is the name of our routers, and uh, we will. Um, configure um, a rule with something like uh, host regex uh, and say that we want to take all the hosts like this, for example. It's an example, you can uh, put um, any rule you want, okay, but uh, here we take all the hosts uh, with just a, a regular expression. Then uh, we will say that we want to apply uh, these routers uh, on the entry point uh, called uh, web because we want to uh, catch uh, every request on the entry point with the port 80. And so uh, we will just say that we want to uh, use it on a web, okay? And so now we want to configure the raw direct and raw direct is a middleware. So we will just create uh, a middleware uh, like this traffic. HTTP again, and so we say just we want some middlewares. Okay, so this is a middlewares. We can put the name of our middleware, we will call it Rodirect, for example. And then uh, we will say that we want a uh, middleware uh, with the type of Rodirect scheme. And we will configure the scheme on it to go to HTTPS. Then now we have a middlewares name, named Rodirect that will just uh, redirect the scheme of our request to HTTPS if it's HTTP. And we just have to say that we want to apply uh, this middleware on our routers just by saying that middlewares and we want to use redirect. Okay. And so uh, we migrate uh, this command line argument. Then uh, we want an entry point named web secure on the port uh, 443. And for this, we will just uh, put a new entry point name web secure, okay, with the address 443. Here we have TLS and we will uh, see later how we will handle TLS, not on the entry point, but directly on the router part. That's okay. Uh, for the log level, uh, in fact, we split a little bit more the configuration and now it's uh, in its own uh, structural like log and uh, the configuration uh, is level. So you would just have to do that. And we did the same with uh, the providers and here is a Docker providers. And so we put it in a provider section uh, for this and for this. Now about the API. Uh, in 
traffic v1 uh, by default the api was just uh, put on the port 8080 without uh, any security and so in v2 we want to just um, show that uh, it can be insecure and so we say that if we expose automatically to the port 8080 uh, we need to say that we want the api in an insecure mode so as i just migrate this i just put insecure and i will have the same behavior is just expose the api and the web ui on the port 8080 that's all i have to do uh, to migrate my command line arguments. Okay, uh, let's go to our application. So uh, I will take the, the second one because I think uh, the second one is simpler uh, for just for the beginning. And so uh, I can keep the traffic uh, dot enable uh, to true, uh, but uh, I will change this to apply the entry points on the routers and not on the front end. So I will do something like this. I create a router. I will name it, for example, uh, API2, uh, like the service name. And I will say that I want to put it on entry points. And I will not put it on web entry point because it doesn't make sense. The only thing I want to do is put these routers on uh, HTTPS. And um, for HTTP, I don't need this router. No. So I will, uh, I will remove the web port. Uh, and I will just say that I want uh, these routers to be uh, with TLS in order to have, um, yes, TLS for this route, for this domain, okay? So I just have to say, I want TLS true. And it, it's in the, in the dynamic part of the configuration. Then I will just migrate uh, this rule. So I will put it again on the router, okay? And I will migrate uh, the rule syntax of this. And so uh, the new rule syntax is something like this. Okay, I specify the host. And instead of this, I can directly say I want an uh, end between uh, this and I just have to change this post like this. Okay, this is the new uh, routing syntax. Okay, we, we really can read that this is host traffic.com.localhost and pass prefix and that's all. Um, okay, and now uh, let's talk about um, the basic out, how to do the basic out in V2. Um, as uh, the redirect, we need to create a middleware to, to do the basic out. Uh, so we will just say that we want a middleware. We will name it, uh, for example, out uh, API2. And this is a basic out middleware, so yes. And we just specify the users of this middleware. And I can keep the same syntax for the value of uh, this field. And then the last thing I have to do is to say on this router that I want to use this middleware. Okay, and I just call like this. Okay. Here, I migrate all this application to V2. And now let's migrate the last application. So uh, it will look something uh, like the same as this one, just we will just change the rule. Uh, but yes, we can change here, uh, say that we want the routers. Uh, no, API one, uh, entry points the same, we keep just the web secure. Uh, I will migrate the middleware first because uh, we will talk about the rule after that. And so HTTP middlewares, we will call it uh, OAT API one, again, a basic OAT, and then the users on this. And then we will add this middleware on our routers. Okay, and OAT API one. And then for the rule, now, um, before that in V1, uh, when you want to do some OR between rule, as you can see here, we have something like us traffic.com localhost and pass prefix to, um, to uh, foo. Uh, when we want to do uh, this and say OR continuous.com localhost, we have to create two segments on the front end. And it was something like complicated to understand, but we need really two rules. 
but with the new routing rule syntax, the only thing we have to do is to say that uh, we put the rule again, okay, but we can definitely say we want to have uh, two rules and a who between the two rules, okay, and I will take the first rule, put it here, migrate just like the previous one, so just like this, with here is the end. Okay. Okay, so this is the first rule and I want this rule or this rule. Okay. Up, yes. No, like this like this, uh, and, and the same here and here. And now this is our new rule. And this is really simpler to explain. You can see that there is a U between two complex rules. And we can remove this. And uh, we forgot to just say that we want it to be on HTTPS, okay? So uh, you want to do some TLS and so you put the TLS to true. And now those two applications are migrated. Um, let's, try, let's try to start this. Mm. So um, I will start, here is my Docker Compose I just migrated, okay. And I could just Docker Compose up. And we will see some typo. No, it seems okay. Everything starts correctly. So now uh, let's uh, take a look at the web UI. Okay. So if I go here, uh, I go to the port 8080. You can see that uh, we have the web UI on the port 8080. Uh, you can see that we have three entry points the 80 named web, the 443 named web secure, and a traffic one for the uh, dashboard. And uh, we can see that we enabled the Docker provider here, and we have some HTTP router. We have three HTTP routers, three HTTP services, and three uh, middlewares. Uh, routers are here. We can find the rules we configure on um, our application. We can see that there is TLS here too. This is the one for the raw direct, and they, they, they don't have TLS, uh, and that's okay. And we, you can find the middlewares you create, so uh, the two BAVIC hosts, uh, the raw direct scheme one, and we can find our three services uh, for the um, for the two applications and for traffic, one for the uh, dashboard, and yeah, uh, we can see that we have our server in it uh, and everything. Now uh, let's try to call our application to see if it works. Uh, let's do it like this. Okay, uh, so uh, if I try to go uh, to the HTTPS port, okay, uh, I receive uh, um, uh, 302 uh, found and we can see that there is a reduction on the, the HTTPS. And if I try the HTTPS with my BAVIC auth credentials, you can see that it works. Uh, we access um, our WAMI. And if we try to go uh, to uh, the other, uh, rule reconfigure, we can see that, you no, know, this is on this one, this is traffic. We have traffic with uh, foo, traffic with foo is a different uh, host name. No, it's the same host name because we have the same rule. And if we uh, use traffic and bar, we, we go to the other host name, so the other application. Um, so as you can see, you can migrate uh, your V1 to V2. And now uh, I will give uh, the mic to uh, Ludovic to talk about uh, how we can improve our configuration. Thank you. So, um, now I'm going to show you how to go further with the V2. Um, and I will start with middleware. So um, with uh, traffic V2, you can use middleware for several routes in the stuff. 
and centralize your configuration. So um, I will remove the definition, so middleware definition on the router and create a single middleware on the traffic container. So I remove the middleware. I call it hot. I remove second middleware and I use it on the router. So um, like that, I define one middleware and I use both. So if you want, I can run this to prove that's work. So how it starts, don't to so Docker Compose. And I will call it it working. So now, <clears throat> um, now I'd like to show you uh, how to even further by moving the middleware configuration to a file and reference it uh, with what we call provider namespace. So I will take the middleware definition. I will create a file. Uh, and I will put the middleware definition. I will rewrite the valid syntax. YAML is case sensitive. I need to be careful with it. And there, so small typo. So I need to remove the escape dollar. So that's good. No, I will remove the middleware and I will change the reference in the application. So I will add the provider namespace, add file. So now I will relaunch my stack and I got a problem. <laughs> yes, because I forget to, um, to enable the file provider. So I will and then the, the file providers. So I will use a directory. So, and I will watch the directory. So, I don't need to, to, to write through. So I also need to mount my configuration. So, and so now it's work. So I will run to show you. Uh, I can sh show you in, oh, no, not now. <laughs> I will show you the, the dashboard later. Um, now uh, we will configure the API to be uh, in HTTPS. So it's something relatively easy with traffic V2. So you just need to create a simple router. So. I'll make a little comment. I will call it traffic. I will put it on web secure because I want HTTPS on my dashboard. And I will, and I will define a host dashboard. Okay. So I need to 
set up TLS. So now, um, as service, uh, I'm going to use a new notion based on the provider namespace, which allow referencing uh, internal services as uh, standard services. I will therefore pass the API in service mode and use the service called API at internal. So I will show you how to define, oh, I define the service called API at internal. So I also need to remove the insecure mode. And I can remove the 8084. So now I will reload my stack. And I will go to my dashboard. So it's self signed certificate, so I need to skip. So maybe I made a typo. Dashboard local host. Oh, <laughs> I did a, um, I did a little mistake. <laughs> Don't put the services on the good routers. So now it will be better. So start. Let's go to dashboard. There's a stats case. And now I have my dashboard, my dashboard on HTTPS. So it's self-signed certificate. So it's not really secure, but it's HTTPS. So now I will, I will, I will play with a uh, little bit with load balancing. I will change the configuration um, to uh, to be able to easily reference the services. I will try to create something like a, a canary approach. So for that, I need to create the services. So to create, to put a name to be able to reference it easily. Services. Load, load, but servers and servers ports. I will take, I will make the same thing on the app two. I'll name service app two. For now, nothing changed. I will, I will sorry. Nothing changed. Everything worked as expected. The only thing that I have changed is so self sign certificate. It's the name of the services. So now um, I will create another file, I'll call it canary, and I will reference the two previous, the two previous service. So I'm not sure. Yes. So I will take a little shortcut. <laughs> oh, so let's play. So we create uh, a service on apply on the HTTP side. So well, my connection connection is unstable. I hope uh, everything is good. So I will create a service on HTTP called Canary, and in this uh, service I define a kind. It is a weighted service. So this weighted service allow to load balance between two services, services in in, uh, in the way that traffic calls that, not 
to um, Docker services is just just to traffic services. So, uh, yep, I forget something. I forget to create another application. Because I want to demonstrate something particular. So my goal was to balance between app two and app three. So as you can see, we have defined the two services. So now we are, we have defined the canary services. We need to reference it in the router. So I will create, we will reference it. So in the key service, uh, in the provide now namespace file, uh, I define a, a basic load balancing, the 50% um, of the traffic goes on the app two and 50 on the app three. So no seems good I will launch that so I made a depot somewhere where you put services instead of service at the line uh, 58 uh, in the line 50, I did services. 58, you have services instead of service. No, yeah. Oh, yes, 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 sorry. So, let's go. So, the load balancing will occur on the on this route, so this command, you will see the load balancing. So take a look to the second IP, and with five, no, and with three, and with five, and with three, and with five. And now I will do something pretty cool then I will change the wave in life so I will remove the app tree from the load balancing without restarts and now I'm stuck on the IP, IP ending with 5 so that's all for me I'm going to and over to GB for the rest. Thank you. Thank you. I will share my screen. Okay. Let's answer some questions of the community. What are the next features and the enhancements that are coming to traffic? Um, we have a bunch of new features that are ready to be chipped with V2.1, like console catalog provider, Kubernetes CRD, with the weighted one robin load balancing and the mirroring. We have KV store, UDP, HTTP3, more load balancing strategies, and the new reduction system that are coming. Future work from community. There are a number of features, such as uh, Azure Fabric support that the community has expressed interest in, and that do not seem unreasonable, but that we cannot spend time on for now. As usual, we're hopeful and pretty confident that the community will provide some help for these features. Dashboard API troubles with custom past prefix. Uh, we have a lot of 
uh, and raises about this issue and this issue was not easy as expected but it will be fixed in the v2.1 best practices for config um, traffic has a lot of features that is to say a lot of different configuration so the best configuration does not exist but we can share some observation and tips Um, first off, do not confuse static conf and dynamic configuration. Uh, in V2, we ex uh, explicitly separated uh, this configuration as seen in the demo. Um, most users do not run the traffic binary directly, but rather through some sort of container orchestrator. Uh, for the few that do run the traffic binary directly, um, in an in its service on a dedicated server, the file configuration, both for static and dynamic, is probably the most familiar way. Otherwise, uh, if you use something like Docker Compose, you're probably better of tweaking the CLI flags in the uh, Docker Compose YAML file for the static configuration and use the label for the dynamic configuration. One exception is for configuring TLS certificates and TLS options or a middleware used by several router as Ludwig showed to you. In that case, it might be convenient to define them once and for all in the configuration file. Traffic V2 config seems more verbose. Yes, it's true. Uh, but the syntax is more explicit and powerful and we can do a lot of new different cases that was impossible with the V1. And we are improving continuously the documentation. HA traffic. Uh, as traffic is stateless, running a pool of traffic for redundancy, availability, etc., is possible, but it is up to you to orchestrate them all together. However, if Let's Encrypt is involved, there's no solution out of the box, uh, just for, with uh, traffic for now, as it basically requires the election of a master among the traffic instances that will be in charge of controlling the certificates removal process. To achieve that, we recommend it for now to use of an external tool such as Cert Manager for the purpose of controlling Let's Encrypt. And you can see on the link below the issue related to. Sans, that's all for now, and we will answer your question. Hey, I don't know about everyone else here, but that was really fun for me to watch. Um, is anyone, does anyone in the audience have any questions? And and I know um, we had a couple come in that we may take. Um, Julian, do we want, do we have any more questions to answer on our side? And does anyone in the audience have any more you'd like to uh, answer? We don't have to stay on here if you don't have questions, but if you do, um, bring them on because right now is the time. Hello, everyone left me. It's now. <laughs> Uh, we can answer the question already, um, uh, or that we have already. Uh, so about um, the uh, cross provider availability, I think we, we saw it in the demo, but yeah, the only thing you have to do is just to represent your other um, uh, entities like middleware in service uh, by uh, using the namespace uh, uh, of the provider with uh, the, the at uh, your provider. So, for example, if you are in uh, Kubernetes CRD and you want to use um, middlewares uh, created in a file, you just have to say that you want the name of the middleware at file and that's all. Okay, very, very cool. Okay, thanks, um, I'm on about um, your comment that you saw the cross provider in the demo. So, I'm glad to hear that. Um, Farid, uh, the code of this demo, will it be available? Um, Julien, will, will our code be available? Yes, we can do it. Uh, we <laughs> didn't do it yet, but yes, we can do it. Okay, so here's what I want to let everyone know that um, after, this, um, after this, what you can expect is you'll get the video of the demo email, or the video of this YouTube session in, um, emailed to you. We will link, um, 
um, the GitHub repo or whatever our team feels is appropriate to share with you as far as code. Um, we'll also in the comments um, or in the description of the YouTube video, we will put a gist which addresses all the questions we've discussed um, and put the, puts the answers there. So if you didn't capture that today, you can go ahead and look in there and, and, and learn about that again. Um, and hi, um, Marin or Marine, uh, what is your question, please? Um, and then we had one new one about extending provider support uh, like AWS ECS. Um, not sure if we have commentary on that right now. Uh, Gerald, are we, are we able to answer this um, question? Uh, yes, definitely. Uh, we, we do plan to extend support to other providers. Um, we have no ADA for each uh, provider, but it is, it is on the roadmap. Right on. Um, and uh, just one moment there, we have some questions coming in. So just um, one second. Real time stuff, everyone. So, uh, I'm on just one moment. We're, we're looking on that and making sure we have the right an answer for you. Um, Federico, which news metrics are in traffic 2.0? That's an interesting question. Does anyone want to take that? Or is that new metrics or news? Okay, here we go. A lot of questions coming in. Give us a second um, and, and contain us team. Anyone you want to answer, just go for it. If there's nothing, then we won't, but. Yeah, I think I can say something about Imam question. Um, what you have to understand is that what with the load balancing we're doing in Kubernetes, like in the other providers, is the load balancing of services. So it's kind of like not at the same level as load balancing of your service, servers. You know, so it, it allows you to load balance between really different traffic services. You could load balance between a mirror service and another load balancer, things like that. So it's kind of different from load balancing your servers directly in Kubernetes. I think, I think that answers your question, but let me know. Let me know. Cool, yeah, and, and just so you, you all know who are in the audience, like um, this is interactive, so feel free to, to kind of dialogue with us in the, in the comments there. Um, and Marin, and I'm sorry if, if I'm mispronouncing your name, but I live uh, next to Marin here, so it's called Marin. Um, so Marin says, just a bit of context, we deployed traffic with three instances on Kubernetes and are using Let's Encrypt to generate certificates. How do you handle the JSON storage um, file used for the certificates? Is it shared between the instances using shared storage? Um, interesting, thanks for giving us context. I really appreciate that. We like to hear a little more about how you're using traffic. Do we have some commentary on this, guys? Team? <laughs> Uh, yes, um, as we said uh, in, uh, in the slide, uh, for now, uh, you can't do uh, any cluster um, uh, HA with a Let's Encrypt. Uh, uh, the, for now, uh, the only way you, you have to do this is to, to don't, uh, don't do uh, Let's Encrypt with traffic for this, just for now, because you will not be able to uh, share your uh, file. Uh, you will have some problem uh, because uh, each traffic will want to uh, to uh, write on it and everything, and so there is no lock system, and uh, you will be you will have some problem. With, you can have some problem with the challenge with the renewal of certificate, and so for now in traffic, uh, you will not be able to do that. Okay, uh, you will have to uh, use uh, an external tool uh, like Sot Manager, for example, if you're in Kubernetes, and yeah, uh, that's the answer for now. Okay, cool. Thank you, Julien. Um, I, I think we should try answering this one. How is traffic any different from Istio? If no one take it, I will take it. <laughs> uh, so yes. Um, uh, traffic will not answer the same problem. Um, Istio is more for uh, like uh, service mesh, 
and uh, traffic is more like uh, an edge router. And so uh, Istio will uh, handle uh, east-west uh, traffic and traffic will uh, handle uh, north to south traffic. Uh, if you want to compare something like Istio, uh, maybe you can uh, take a look at Mesh, uh, which uh, is an answer to the uh, east-west uh, traffic problem. Uh, but yes, uh, this is the main uh, difference. Cool, thanks. And I just put um, the link to Mesh, which is our service Mesh, in uh, the chat box, so you can all check that out. We're, we're super stoked on it. It just released uh, last month. Um, and, and a few more questions I've listed here. Um, do you plan extending uh, metrics exposing for observability like Prometheus? Do we have commentary on that? Again, I take it, so. Um, uh, about the metrics, um, uh, we have uh, another question about metrics. Um, so uh, for now, we don't expose more metric in V2 than in V1. Uh, again, uh, uh, contribution uh, are welcome. And so you can add metrics if you think uh, we miss metrics uh, in, in, this, uh, in this version. And uh, we already can expose uh, metrics uh, on um, Prometheus. Uh, in fact, uh, you have uh, today we have um, Prometheus, uh, InfluxDB, uh, Datadog, and I think that all. Oh. Cool. And actually, you, you pinged my brain to remember to tell everyone who's here to please uh, utilize the community forum. Um, that's where we can really take care of you and, and, and read your questions and the community can help answer them um, as a group so that, so that you're, you're good to go. Um, Okay, well, Marin, thanks for your comment. So Marin said um, that they had an issue with Let's Encrypt because they re reached the generation limit. So that was their bad. Well, thanks for owning that, um, that it wasn't our fault. So cool. Um, I think we're good to go. We may have one more question we want to answer. Uh, Julian or the rest of the team, if you'd like to, to do that final one um, about CRD. Um, other than that, I will say, um, do we want to answer that, Julian? Are we able to? Uh, in fact, uh, like this, we don't have any answer on this question. This is a question about Kubernetes CRD and file, and um, we we can see uh, a service uh, defines uh, the file in the, the UI. Uh, in the UI, you you are able to see two or more providers. So it's not uh, an issue with the the UI. So I think uh, maybe it's a uh, it's a bad configuration. Yes, this is what I want to say. I think it's a bad conversation, but uh, you're welcome to go on the community forum uh, to ask for those questions, uh, uh, give us uh, your configuration, and we will try to, to help you with your configuration to understand what, what, is, what may be bad in your configuration. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Thanks. I put the community link in there because like, when you do it in the community forum, it's Julian, it's, it's our whole entire maintainer team who have built the software from the ground up over years. And then the entire community who are also going through the same problems and challenges um, and solutions that you may or may not be going through. So, so it just gives you more firepower to fix your fix things and move quickly, iterate quickly. Um, so with that, we're going to wrap it up now, 9.58 um, or whatever time it is where you're at. And, and on behalf of the team, I mean, we thank you so much. You could do so much with your time and you're here with us. Um, we're really excited to see you at KubeCon, see you at our upcoming meetups, see you online. Thank you for using our software and being there with us as we grow and scale and, and build. And uh, Pau de los Santos, it is our pleasure to bring you this meetup and we look forward to bringing you many more in, 2020, in 2020. Um, so to everyone, Happy New Year, Merry Christmas, uh, uh, Happy all the holidays, whatever you celebrate. And from our team to, your, to you, um, thank you. And I think our team wants to thank you also. Yes, thank you everybody. Thank Thanks you. Thank right. you for coming. Bye-bye. Ciao, ciao. Au revoir. Ciao. Ciao.